Hi, my name's Bob Grinier, and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Okay, this is a video in a series of videos that is asking, are big science projects fighting against what nature wants to do? Are there lessons to be learned from problems in Lena, Tokamaks, and the Large Hadron Collider? So, if you remember in a previous presentation called Exotic Vacuum Objects in Various Lena Systems, uh, I looked at a range of observations that I had made and correlated them to other observations in the field of Lena. And we are preparing at the moment to run this supernova reactor. We're just waiting for a replacement magnetron there. And uh, this was one of the strike marks that was observed on the inside clamshell. And I picked this one out uh, to show as EVO1 because it looked very similar to another one done uh, in the 1990s and observed by uh, Takaaki Matsumoto. And the features that this has, really, uh, that I pointed out, were the central uh, sort of uh, zone here uh, with this kind of like segmented outer area. And then this kind of field area where it's kind of like smooth or less mottled than the area around it. And uh, this appeared to be in the hexagon shape. Uh, here is the Matsumoto uh, micrograph from uh, 1993 and the one I took here in 2020. So you can see the comparison there in grayscale. Now, it isn't just that one that was a hexagon. Here's another example. Uh, but the internal structure is a lot more complicated. And this looked like other Matsumoto findings where you had this kind of mesh-like structure. But it's the hexagon that I'm interested in discussing here. Uh, also, uh, there were pentagons, and I talked about the fact that the work of Bogdanovich et al. Uh, uh, in Moscow at the nuclear research facility there, uh, they had observed these uh, exotic vacuum objects, as I would uh, suspect them to be, clusters of um, uh, these toroi um, forming like crystal structures, and they typically be, were five or six coming together and moving around uh, around their own axis and around the combined axis. So, um, uh, and I talked about the fact that Matsumoto uh, conceded in the early 2000s that he had effectively replicated the work of uh, Kenneth shoulders uh, and that these in fact were therefore exotic vacuum objects and so I want to bring another one to the table here and I was doing some research for this uh, presentation and I was reminded um, uh, of a presentation that was uh, made to me uh, whilst I was in India uh, with Suhas Ralkar and Dr. George Eagley about forgotten inventions and I was looking through that presentation about one aspect, which I will talk about in the next presentation. Uh, however, uh, I saw this image, and this was a micrograph that was uh, of um, a plate from a sort of career-type uh, uh, plate uh, experiment, where you have uh, two uh, plates and you have a, a gas discharge, quite like some work done, I think, in the 1930s and 1940s. But anyway... Um, this uh, immediately struck me when I was looking at it again that we have, what do we have? We have a pentagon uh, of uh, sort of field area around this central circular spot. Um, of course, there isn't as much structure in here as uh, we see in, for instance, this one with this kind of pentagon outline. But certainly um, uh, you have this kind of uh, central circular spot with this uh, kind of pentagon around the outside. And so um, this wasn't the only example that he had in his presentation, which I've given the YouTube link to down here. Uh, there was another one here, and uh, this is obviously on a uh, angle. However, there is a hexagon in this at that angle. And so we have the same kind of structures. Now, um, this is going to be a short presentation, but it will lead into the next presentation. But however, during the presentation, uh, Dr. Eagley, when he was talking about these Chinetsky and Carrere devices, uh, he said that within these structures, there were helical um, uh, effects on those cathode spots. 
uh, and that these were not present in straight um, discharges. And so he also said that um, these devices had self-generation of power. And I'm just going to uh, quickly show you some slides from those presentations that he gave. He also gave it at, at ASTI and again uh, in America. But anyway, the self-generation of power. And he says where there were no spots, there was no power production. So uh, was it the power production that was causing the spots or were uh, the spots causing the power production? Uh, what's the cause and effect? And the failure of devices uh, of this type were due to dust aggregation on the inside of the tubes. Now, uh, did the dust itself uh, cause the power production or was played a role in it? Or was it an effect of the power production? I hope to answer those questions in the next presentation. Now, these are some original uh, Carrere Brothers reactors, and uh, they have plates in there. And this shows them when they become useless. And, and Dr. Eagley describes in the presentation that you, you should go and look at that it, it got coated with this uh, film, and that became conductive, and then the device ceased to work. These are chinetsky type self-generating discharge uh, devices. Uh, here are some more of that type. And he shows uh, that um, uh, in the case of Carrere, you can see here, if I can zoom into that, you can see that there is uh, this self-generation uh, pulses here. And that in their own work in Hungary, Dr. Eagley and his colleagues uh, also saw this self-generation effect. These charts are showing the self-generation effect. And he's saying that this uh, comes in pulses. And these are some of the kind of type of uh, career type devices that he uh, explored. So what we have effectively done is we have connected Korea and Chinetsky to the supernova reactor and uh, microwave uh, plasma reactors and the work of Shoulders and Matsumoto. In a follow-on presentation to this, I will talk about the potential way that the self-generation occurs, the relationship to the spots, and the relationship to the dust that is produced. So thank you very much for your time, and I will see you in the next video.